Hello. How are you? Uh, that's the question. I woke up and I, as you can tell, am a little congested. So I'm leaving here early and going to my local health store to get something to knock whatever this is out. So my name is Kim Creighton and I am here to talk to you about overcoming the challenges of mentoring. Successful mentoring doesn't just happen, it's planned. So um, before I do that, because I don't want to forget, because I have some things I would like some help on. So the Junior Dev Mentoring Men uh, website is up. It is actually an offshoot of a Rails project that I did and a tutorial. So anybody wants to mentor me to make this better, let's go. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, uh, one thing I wanted to mention is I am hosting a Harvard CS50 puzzle day on Saturday at General Assembly. Um, we will need mentors to come and help us, um, us newbies, do some puzzles. There, won't, there will be no computer, there, you don't have to have any computers, it's just puzzles that Facebook is creating. And it's a competition and we'll be um, working on these puzzles together from Saturday from noon to five in General Assembly. If anybody wants to come hang out, we'll have pizza. Um, E-Hire is sponsoring it, so it's gonna be a great time. And also, it's not on here, but I will be host, well, Junior Dev Mentoring will be hosting an event for newbies every month. And so then March 5th, and I'm planning that now, we're gonna be doing um, intro to um, open source where newbies can do their first pull request, because I still haven't done a pull request. I've pushed, but I haven't pulled. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. So with that said, I'll get started. And, um, whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. So as I said, um, my name's Kim. This is the website, blah, blah, blah. I went through that. My blog is Tech Talk for Non-Techies. I am pa passionate about bringing people into tech who s still see it as a toy and not as a tool. And that's so many people. Um, so that's where I come from. So anybody, any, all of you guys know, if you do any Google search on jobs in tech, programming, coding, there are lots of jobs. Um, and there are a lot of people coming into the field. There's a mix, mix, mix match. Hmm, let me get it together. There's not a match <laughs> between ending a boot camp, finishing your online tutorials, reading a book, and being junior dev ready. There's a big chasm. There is a big gulf. There is the Grand Canyon between that and getting a job. And all of this started from a blog post that I wrote um, called Stop Lying to Newbies. This shit's hard. Stop telling us it's not. Because um, we start thinking it's our fault when we can't get the dev environment to work. We don't know. You guys aren't being honest and saying, oh, I couldn't get it to work either. So we don't know. We think it's just, when you go through these tutorials, you think it's just syntax. So, and basically what they tell you, you go through this and you'll be ready to get a job. And then someone throws a coding test at you and you're like, what the hell is this? I don't know what this is. And so you just feel defeated and dejected. And if you're like me, who's a career changer, a lot of people have to go back to their older lives because they can't wait to get a job. And so you're losing people who could actually fill these positions. So my passion is, come on, guys, let's mentor these, these newbies, people like me. But it's not easy. There are people who want to mentor, but it's a challenge. So um, there's this ongoing mantra within the de development community, like, oh, there's a lot of jobs. But then you hear the frustrations that no one can fill these jobs. Um, it's like. You see, and, and um, juniors or people, or newbies, we see these, um, these, all these job descriptions, three years of this, and I'm looking for a senior. Let's be honest. If you're a senior developer, you have a job, and you can figure out where you want to go. You, you can write your ticket. It's getting that first job that's the challenge. And so, oops. Um, and so the challenge is... It's not the number of um, newbies in the early field, it's because they're leaving because we can't bridge the gap. And the developer, one thing I can tell you about the developer community is I am overwhelmed by how generous you are. 
I come from education. No one gives anything away for free. Nobody. So when someone is like, oh, wow, you need help? And they just offer it and you're not, you're not in my pocket for something. You're not wanting me to do something. Anywhere. That was a big paradigm shift for me. That was a big thing that people are just giving away. I mean, hell, open source? You're just giving it away? Um, that's a big thing. And you guys are very generous. Um, and, the, and the issues are the costs, business costs associated, associated with not being, high, being able to hire people means businesses are turning business down. They're late on deliverables. It's costing them because they don't have the coders and the programs to do the work. Every day, you know somebody else who started some tech company. Um, and 89% of organizational leaders, I'm a researcher by heart, so I'm always looking for uh, to, uh, proven data, um, say that they have unfilled positions. And so it's frustrating. And it's, it's not the fact that there are no jobs or there are no people. The people just aren't qualified for the jobs yet. So what I'm going to talk about are the four quadrants of mentoring. And you really need to understand that if you want to be a mentor and a mentee. So as I said, I come from education, and I've worked with young people from as young as five to seniors. I've taught in school, after school, summer camp. I've taught GED. I've trained adults to work with kids. I've, done, I've written curriculums. I've done learning is my thing. So, but there's a big difference between mentoring young people and mentoring adults and, and mentoring personally and, and, and professionally focused. So when you're mentoring youth, it's all focused on that young person. It's all about them. It's not about you. It's about them. It's about, and, and there is really no goal except to get them to be productive, tax-paying citizens. That's what the goal is for when you're mentoring young people. And you jump through hoops to do that. You end up mentoring. You end up taking folks to Six Flags. You end up taking their brothers and sisters to Six Flags. You end up going to Christmas dinners. You, I mean, it's just really personal because it's about building that young person up. A lot of times building that family up. And that's what it takes because it's about them and getting them to be productive adults. And again, it's one way focused. With adults, it's different. Mentoring adults is focused usually on gaining a skill for a particular thing. So there is a reason. I mean, not to say that it's not a reason for young people. It's, it, it's an end point. I have something tangible, something measurable that I'm trying to reach. Um, and so it becomes focused on how can I best do this? How, what's the best way to do this? And it's about acquiring and demonstrating knowledge and skills. And it's best practice is that it's mutual. It's mutually beneficial for the, um, both adult parties. Uh, again, with young people, it's not about you, it's about them. And adults often find them roles, themselves cast in the role as mentor, mentee, or both. Um, I could be mentoring somebody, I could be being, being mentored, and, I, and depending on what I'm working on, let's just put it back in the cold realm. One of my friends who's coding could have the, know how to do this, this thing, and I don't, no, so they're mentoring me, but they don't know how to do this other thing, so I'm mentoring them. So it can be really in both roles. Personal. When you're mentoring personally, it's unstructured. It's, again, it's that, it, 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 it seeps, it's, it's mushy, it's can be really nasty. It can be really great, but it can be really, you know, it's just, it, it flows. It's like, the, I have this picture in my mind of this blob. It just kind of eases its way, its way into all areas of your life. It's really personal. Um, and it's just open-ended. It, it, there's no end date to it. It could just go on for years. Professional mentoring is, is about, I see the best um, examples of it are like apprenticeship programs. It's well thought out. It's well um, defined goals and objectives. There's end dates. There's me it's measurable. It's um, it's quantifiable. It's it's I. This is what I want to do. This is how we're doing it. This is when it's going to be done. Da 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 da. That makes that's personal. I mean that's professional. So what we're going to focus on is the adult and professional. That's what we need to focus on when we're mentoring um, people. And I'm not talking about high school students. 
Uh, I'm talking about, as you know, there are a lot of career changes. There are people who are beyond college who are getting into um, coding. So what mentoring is not. Mentoring is not a one-shot problem solver. It's not Stack Overflow. It's not Slack. It's not Tech 404. That's help when I need it. That's putting the best triage. That's grading. When I get shot, take me to Grady. If I have a cold, please don't take me to Grady. <laughs> Stay away from Grady. Nothing wrong with Grady. But if I'm not dying, I don't need to go there. Um, so that's how I feel when I go to Slack. And that's definitely how a lot of newbies feel when they have the, their last option is Stack Overflow. Oh, my God. It is terrifying for a lot of newbies to go on Stack Overflow. They need to be losing limbs to go on Stack Overflow because they're so afraid that somebody is going to be an asshat and say something <laughs> that just really just so dejecting and they just, get, they just get so beat down. And it's not casual. It's not maybe I'll do it, maybe I won't. I've had experience in code. Again, everybody wants to help out and, 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 and be a mentor. Everybody can't do it. So I've had people who can't say, you know what, my schedule has gotten busy. They just don't respond to text anymore. Um, they, and it happens on, I don't know about, they happens on Slack too. Someone's answering a question for you and it's like they dropped dead or they went to the toilet or something because they never come back. It's just like you're just hanging there and you've changed all their code based on what they're saying and now you're stuck. So now you have to go back. So it's not that leaving people hanging thing and it's not static, it evolves. So if someone says, um, if you're working with a mentee, and they, need to, they say they want to be over here, but they're over here, it evolves. What mentoring is is a relationship. And like any relationship that you value, you put time, effort, and caring into it. You're empathetic to the, per the people who are involved. Um, it means something to you. You value it. It's personal. It's a personal connection. No one wants to be mentored or ha have a mentor or mentee that they don't like. No one wants to deal with somebody they don't like. That's just the bottom line. If I don't like you, I'm going to try to get out of that situation as quickly as possible. Um, and it's a commitment. It's a commitment to say, I'm going to stick with you until the goal that we've defined has been reached. And it's professionally transformational. If people, um, if one senior committed to mentoring one junior, on a project, I would say ideally, I would say ideally for a year. Um, and it could be just meeting uh, 30 minutes to an hour a week. That could really level up someone. And it doesn't have to be one hour at a time. It could be chunked out just to commit to, to helping a, a somebody who really wants to do this job um, to get to where they need to go. The factors for effective mentorship. Mentors, this is where the disconnect happens. You need to be, be able to evaluate your motivation. Why do you want a mentor? And you need to be honest with yourself. It's a self-evaluation. Um, it's great that it makes you feel good and warm and cozy inside. But when you drop the ball in mentoring and somebody who's learning gets that, they, they internalize that. It becomes something I've done. And that's with kids, that's with anybody who's learning something new. You're very uncomfortable, you're very insecure. And so you really need to understand your motivation for why you're doing this. You need to take an honest assessment of your time, your talent, and your temperament. A lot of people know things, a lot of people can't teach things. A lot of people want to do it, but you don't have the time in your life to do it. And that's okay. Um, and so Stack Overflow and, and Slack work for you, but it's not a mentorship relationship. And you need to be able to set realistic goals. And I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. So as a mentee, I need to respect reciprocity. Someone is giving of their time. I need to be able to respect their time, their effort. I don't do anything that makes them, that inconveniences them if, if I can help it. Um, one of my mentors works out of Alpharetta. Every Friday, I live past the airport. Every Friday, I do an 80-mile trip, round trip, to go see him for two hours. Um, I just um, got another mentor who lives in Seattle, Washington. That's three-hour difference. Yes, I'm going to rearrange my schedule so that it does not inconvenience him. He has a 10-month-old child 
that I have to understand that sometimes when we plan something, this little boy is going to take precedence and we have to change our schedule. We have to respect the mentoring relationship and we have to have identified um, des um, desired outcomes. And that goes back to realistic goals. Okay, this stems from the lie that we keep getting, newbies keep getting told about this shit's easy. Okay, so when we decide, okay, everybody's, oh my God, you need to go learn the code. You can start at $90,000 and and all you need is to take my course and learn it in 30 days and you can get a job. Okay, so when that doesn't happen, which inevitably doesn't, unless you have some background, I come from liberal arts, I have no background in this. So unless you come from engineering something, to have something to hold on to, um, for me it was, it was literally like lear learning a new language, but with Mandarin and Arabic, and every fifth word was a Mandarin character, and every third letter was an Arabic character, and it was just, so I, at this point, have no realistic expectations of, I don't know what, what's possible. So that's where the mentor comes in. Because I can say, I want to do this thing in 30 days, and the mentor says, okay, you know, that's great, but let's back up a minute. Let's be more realistic. Because we have no realistic ideas of what can happen, because we've been told, so everything, oh, you can do everything. You can do everything. And when we can't, we start beating up on ourselves, and then we don't. So that's um, a major thing that mentors can do. Just give us a realistic expectations of what's possible and how to get it done. So I want to show you quickly one of the best examples of someone who thought out. Um, he wants to be a mentor, as you can see. He clearly has thought out. What, um, and by the way, this is the guy I was saying from um, um, Seattle, Washington, that is now my mentor. He has clearly thought out how he wants to mentor. He knows he wants to mentor someone from the un un underrepresented population. Um, he says here his 10 month old, he wants to work um, an hour, an hour and a half per week, you know, looking at all these different things. But, you know, his schedule changes because he has a 10 month old. These are the languages he wants to work with frameworks, the concepts, and these are skills, and then he, he tells you why he wants to do it, and then he tells you what his ideal, um, ideal candidate is. So then he provides an application, and then you tells a little bit about himself. This is somebody who's thoroughly thought out that process, and what's funny is, as he was getting applications, he realized that even that wasn't enough, that he had to tweak that. Because a lot of people were saying, he says, some people were saying, oh, they want to learn Angular. Well, he says he has no, no desire to learn Angular. Because one of the things he was saying, if he doesn't know it, he'll learn it. He's excited to learn it with you, or he'll find somebody who can help you. Well, he, just, he said, oh, my God, I got so many things saying I want to learn Angular. I have no desire to learn Angular, so that's not going to work for me. And he really made him think about that. And when he, um, we've had, we had to schedule, reschedule our interview time um, twice because of his son's schedule was off. Um, and he was very apologetic about that. And I really appreciated that. But I understand he, he really sees what it's going to take. He, this is his desire. But desire and actuality is two different things. So he really was challenged with that. And so moving forward, we're just going to, you know, go with the flow and see what, how, how our schedule works. We still don't have a schedule yet. And so um, that's it's how thorough you need to think about taking on the mentoring relationship. So with that, um, this is the reasons why, these are the, some of the reasons why development needs um, effective mentoring. The industry needs to do a better job at recruiting and retaining the number of developers they need to fill current and future uh, positions. Either you can't get them, we can't, you can't, um, we can't get to be Junior Dales, or when we get in, we're so disillusioned, it's not what we thought it was going to be that we leave. Um, and we have to do a better job of that. And just like with any, in any other industry, people apprentice, people mentor, people take your hand and walk you through the process. No one just throws someone out there um, who's new to a whole field and expect them to know what's going on. Um, newbies have a hard time um, leveling up on our own. I don't care if you go and spend $15,000 on a boot camp. 
You, without someone helping you answer questions consistently, you're going to have a hard time leveling up. You, um, it helps to have somebody there to hold your hand, to, to walk you through, to when you um, get stuck on something, you, someone dedicated who can answer questions for you. Because um, once you leave boot camp, I don't really know how that is, but I don't know how, I mean, can, can you email them for the rest of your life? I mean, for, or until you get a job and ask them, you know, questions? I don't know. Can you call them? I don't know. But I know when I um, did my online tutorials, and God knows I've done, I've done Linda, I've done Code Manual, I've done um, Code School, I've done uh, Free Code Camp, I've done um, Learn Python the Hard Way, I've done um, that uh, Ruby on Rails, Michael Hartle. Um, there's no one there to hold my hand through that. Um, Learning to call, okay, blah, 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 blah. I said about the reality checks. Um, I need to figure out how to turn that off. Um, and, and, and also, the big, the big one for me is no one comes at this. If you're going to be a doctor, you take step one. Then you, you take step two. It's all defined. This is the Wild West. People come, come at this from all different backgrounds, from all different areas. And, and it's, it's mind boggling. One day someone, you talk to somebody, oh, you need to be doing this. The next day somebody discounts that and say, oh, you need to be doing that. And, then, and it's just so confusing. We have no way to measure any of this. We're just like, uh, okay, um, help, somebody help. Um, and so we really need that mentoring because everybody just comes at it from a, just a different place. And I love that it's the Wild West, but that could be very scary. It's like you're jumping off a cliff every day. And it's only so much. If you have a family, if you have mortgage to pay, you have it's so, many, so much you can jump off a cliff before you have to go back to you, where you came from and say, you know what? Hey, I got to go back to do what I got to do because I got to pay my bills. So as a first start of self-assessment, I'll ask you guys to take out your phones or whatever electronic device you have in front of you. And first, put yourself in the role of decide if you want to be a mentor or a mentee. So you're going to pick your, you're going to, you're, this is your acting thing. You're going to pick a role. And you're going to write three personal challenge, um, strengths and challenges as, as that role. So as a, if you were a mentor, what are three strengths that you bring to, as a mentor? And what are three challenges that you, that, that are personal challenges that you would have as a mentor. And the same thing as a mentee. What are three strengths you have as a mentee? And what are three personal challenges you bring to the role of a mentee? And I'll give you guys um, a few minutes to, because I really want people to think about this. And if somebody wants to uh, report out, that's great. But really think about how your life, your temperament, your lifestyle, um, is in the role of mentor or mentee. Anybody willing to report out? Okay. Nobody willing? We can keep moving. All right. So with that, oh, you willing? Okay. Uh, so I would say if I would be a mentor, uh -huh. uh, my strengths would be that I'm opinionated, which I think is good because there's very little hesitation in terms of like what I think is like, this is the thing. Okay. Uh, I'm curious, so I just want to learn more stuff about more people and more things, so that's probably helpful. And empathetic, I, I genuinely try to care about people who are around me. Okay. Put myself in their shoes. All right, and your challenges? Uh, easy as hell. Okay. Uh, Occasionally moody, and uh, that's, that's basically it. it. Mostly, it's the busy. I would say is the, the big thing. It's hard to get time. So how would focus? So how would you, outside. as a, is, if, if 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 you if someone wanted you desire to mentor, how would you use your strengths to help you with your challenges? 
let's take the, if the big one is, the big one is time. How can you use your empathy, your, what was the? I'm opinionated and curious, so. Uh, curious. So, yeah, how could you use those to your, um, to offset that? I think if I don't have time, I have enormous numbers of reading lists and occasionally blog posts about those reading lists mm -hmm. and things I've written down about them um, that could be used to, to supplement actual time. Like, oh, you have this question, mm -hmm. um, you know, you're concerned about how does this practice work in practice, and I can say, okay, read these three things, this is what I think about them, come back, tell me what you thought about these things. Exactly. Um, and and that and it's then you've taken it the pressure off you. You put it back in their lap, and you've had them not only read something but assess it and determine how it can benefit them. Exactly. Anybody else? Yes. These are your three strengths. Okay. Okay. And challenges. And challenges are just like time. Um, Depending on where they are, technological constraints, sometimes that's an issue. Um, and just, I don't know, that's really anything else that we'll take back. All right, so let's do the techno technological constraints. Mm -hmm. How can you use your strengths to offset that challenge? Uh, a lot of times, well, the way I would mentor certain people is remotely, so it's great if their Skype sucks, we'll, we'll go over, like, you know, Hang out, and if that sucks, we'll try Team Viewer. If that sucks, then you know we might get on the phone and share the screens and stuff like that. So I just yeah. found out about. I just I just realized that Join Me has somebody can remote your computer on Join Me. I mean, this, this is another one I've been using a lot, especially with my son. It's called Talk. Talking. Talking. Talking.io. No, I've it's heard of like WebRTC, so it's pretty amazing. Cool. Yes. Anybody else? Yes. Oh, you want? It? Okay, I'll, this will be the last one. Yes. So, to me as a maker and a customer card, so like, I have no problem doing the work that people actually need me to do. If you need to do this, get there, cool. I can do that. And humility, like admitting that I don't have all the answers, or in some cases, frankly, you know, what you did kind of sucked. Why don't you start over, like, not afraid to admit that. And then, So how can you use your, I'm going to directly tie your strength of being that discipline that you have as a musician to that challenge you said of being new. How can you tie those together? Um, just with the team, I'm just, yeah, I guess I'm happy and willing to do the stuff that's like boring or routine. Like, you just got to do this, you got to do it, you got to do it, you got to do it. I don't mind doing it because I think it's able. Exactly. Stuff that people think is boring, that's what got me to where. Up, so. Exactly. So with that, I'll end. But it's just an example of, although mentoring Kim is a challenge, if you plan it out, if you have, and one thing I want to say is the best thing for you time challenge people are projects. Projects. So if a person says, um, I want to learn front end development. Then you give them a project to see what you need to assess where they are because they don't know where they are. They think, oh, I can do this. So you give them a project. You start with CSS and HTML and see where they go. It's quantifiable. It's measurable because either they do well or they don't. And if they don't, you back up and you say, OK, well, these are the skills you need to work on. So let's work on those. Everything is quantifiable and, and, and you give them a deadline. That's how it's, it becomes manageable as, as a profession for a professional mentoring relationship. Everything is measured, everything is written down, everything is outlined, everything is covered and agreed upon in first, at first. We're gonna start this day, we're gonna end this day. So thank you guys for your time. 
This video has been sponsored by Rietta Incorporated. Learn more today at rietta.com.